Dr. Mo, we all know that exercise is important, but what type and how much? We can do aerobic and anaerobic types of activity. Anaerobic would be that which we typically can't maintain for a very long period of time, such as heavy weightlifting. Uh, aerobic would be anything that we can sustain for an extended time frame, such as walking. Uh, the aerobic activities would be the ones that we would be most interested in if we're trying to do heart health. You can certainly do weight training that are uh, weight training activities that are aerobic and we'd be protective if we were thinking about bones. For the heart, for the most part, we'd be thinking about aerobic activities such as uh, a stationary biking or walking on a treadmill or swimming in a pool or something that you can sustain for an extended time frame. There are certain reasons to use certain of the various types available. For instance, people who have back problems might find a recumbent kind of bicycle more conducive to their being able to continue a, a long time frame. Uh, there would be people who have knee problems who might have difficulty walking but surprisingly could bike very easily. Uh, there would be people who would have nerve problems that would preclude them from certain choices. Uh, and, and so the issue is not so much what's the right exercise as it is what's the right one for me as an individual. To be protective, we should do 30 minutes of activity most or all days of the week. That can be in smaller segments, such as 5 to 15 minute segments, but probably should be at least that long in order to gain optimal benefit. How does exercise reduce my risk for heart disease? Exercise has a multitude of ways uh, to reduce risk. It will help with blood pressure control. It will help with blood sugar control. It will help with cholesterol control. It will help with stress control. It will help with overall maintenance of heart structure and function. It will help with maintaining the relative suppleness of the, of the big arteries that we have. Uh, exercise per se gives people a sense of relief and often confidence. You, you're probably all aware that um, some psychiatrists actually use some exercise to help with controlling depression. As everyone knows, depression is a real risk factor for heart disease, and therefore exercise may, in a not well understood way, actually help us with reducing heart disease by facilitating um, peace or inner peace that makes us um, have less risk for the development of the coronary thrombosis or heart attack. For persons with coronary artery disease, what lifestyle, including diet, changes need to be made to prevent future events? In our society, the average American could use some sustained aerobic activity. They typically could use less dietary saturated fat. They typically could benefit by the utilization of fish in their diet and or fish oil. They typically can benefit by regular consumption of a baby aspirin. Sometimes it's larger depending on the given individual. Uh, certainly exercise and a regular consistent exercise program would be fundamental. Uh, it is not uncommon that people will benefit by participating in cardiac rehab, not just for the short term 12 week or so trial, but actually persisting in a setting like that because it, uh, through camaraderie and accountability, causes them to continue to exercise um, uh, in a way that they wouldn't if they were on their own. Are there specific concerns or recommendations for people with diabetes? The diabetic patient is troubled with uh, likelihood of coronary disease. Someplace around three quarters of those people actually end up dying of heart attack. Uh, type 2 diabetes is increasing in our country um, rather dramatically and it has become a progressively more difficult problem to solve. Uh, some of the lifestyle choices that might make a difference would include some dietary change. Typically these people with diabetes will have uh, weight issues that are in part uh, engendered due to inac inactivity. Uh, diabetics may well have um, dietary choices that cause them to be predisposed to uh, the diabetic problems. So I would be thinking in terms often of weight 
and diet and specific activity program that might make a difference for them. Uh, often they will have an excess of saturated fat. Often they'll have uh, an, um, a decrease in the, or a limited amount of unsaturated fats that may be beneficial for them. We would think for these people in terms of adding fish oil because of the unique benefits of the fish oil. Uh, <clears throat> It's interesting that far and away the biggest cause or contributor to people developing type 2 diabetes in our country is not a genetic issue, but it is a weight issue. And we as a society are sliding down a pathway that's going to lead more and more of us to developing diabetes. And that probably is the primary issue that needs to be addressed through multiple ways, including uh, dietary approach and activity. Uh, the exercises that a, a person with diabetes might undertake could well be different than for somebody without diabetes because often they will suffer uh, neurologic uh, issues. That is, they will lose sensitivity of their feet, for instance, and, and not understand that they're actually injuring themselves or develop a blister and not understand that that's present. And so for a diabetic, we might be thinking about non-weight-bearing activity we might be thinking in terms of swimming. Uh, we might be thinking in terms of uh, other pool activities that could be useful. Certainly most diabetics don't have to worry about that, but as, as the disease progresses, it's often important to check on their status and see if their exercise program needs to be modified based on uh, how the diabetes has progressed.